Hello, and welcome to the next episode of the Klingberg Wing Mark II Development. I'm Raul Klingberg, your host. Today, I'm going to be demonstrating and discussing uh, what I believe is a new methodology for making composite tubing. It's analogous to sandwich panel construction on standard uh, composite aircraft. Uh, what you're looking at here in this photo is a uh, piece of tubing that I made where the inside layer is a three ounce fiberglass cloth and then the foam core of the sandwich panel is seven tenths of a mi millimeter uh, Eryx foam and uh, the outside is a standard 5.6 ounce carbon fiber bidirectional woven cloth. Um, the methodology that I'm using is very similar to how you make composite tubing at home except I've modified it so that uh, it's a three-step process. You lay down one layer or as many layers as you want of a particular composite material on your mandrel, and then you spiral wrap the strip of foam uh, around that mandrel, and then you overwrap it with uh, other composite material that you want. It could be Kevlar, fiberglass, carbon fiber, and as many layers as you want. What this does is it optimizes the strength to weight ratio of the tubing. Rather than having uh, five, six, seven, eight layers of very expensive uh, carbon fiber material, you can make the tube much more efficient by applying this sandwich panel methodology. So what you're gonna see in the fast forward video is I'm going to lay down the fiberglass on the mandrel and then over wrap it uh, with the foam and then wrap with the carbon fiber and then at the end of the fast forward section you're going to see me wrap it with some peel ply and some uh, heat shrink plastic uh, it's basically the same process i use for making standard composite tubing uh, in a few days here i'm going to be posting uh, some detailed videos on how you actually create composite tubing how you can make it on a straight section of aluminum tube and yet still remove that part when you're done. There's a few tricks to it and I hope you come back and watch those videos. Uh, in the meantime, take a look at this. I think you'll find it interesting uh, and I'm going to have a little discussion at the end about why it works and how you get the foam to wrap around the mandrel uh, and uh, please enjoy. Okay, I wanted to take a moment here to talk a little bit more about the sandwich panel construction method for tubing. Uh, you've watched the video where I produced uh, this tubing. It's fiberglass on the inside, carbon fiber on the outside, and seven tenths of a millimeter uh, Eryx foam uh, for the core. Uh, this tube is really very stiff. I'm looking at this for the torque tube for the Elevons. Uh, this weighs 1.15 ounces per foot and I need eight feet of this. So we're looking at a half a pound on each side or a pound for the entire aircraft for the torque tubes. I might be able to get the weight down a little less than that. I think I might drive, drive it down to around 12 ounces for the two sides as possible. But I wanted to take a moment here and talk a bit more about that molding process and why it works the way it works. 
I think it's very interesting. I don't think I've ever seen uh, sandwich panel construction for tubing before, but you can produce some extremely lightweight, strong tubing this way uh, and use less of the very expensive graphite material. Instead of having a tube that's three or four layers thick to get the same compressive strength, um, you have one layer of carbon fiber, one layer of fiberglass, much less expensive that way. As you saw from the video, it's uh, more involved to produce the parts, uh, but if you really need to save weight, that's a good way to do it. And what I've done here is I've uh, cut this tube off at an angle so I can explain why the foam has the ability to wrap on the spiral. If you took that foam and just laid it out straight on the tube and tried to wrap around this way, it would crack. Uh, you'd have problems matching up the edges. But doing the spiral wrap this way, when you're done, you put a twist on the foam, pulls all the edges together really tight, you're good to go. And the reason it's, it works is because as the foam is laid up on an angle on the tube, the relative curvature that it's having to follow is much more shallow than if you're looking at the end of the tube. If you were wrapping this way, you have the curvature of a one inch diameter tube that you have to try to meet and the foam just can't do that. But depending upon the angle of the cut, this relative curvature gets flatter and flatter the steeper that you do that wrap. I did the wrap at somewhere around 45 degrees. That's about what this tube is cut off at. And you see that this radius of curvature here is much less than what you would have to deal with over here. And you say, oh, but wait, Raul, you have to go around this corner too. But as the foam is wrapping, it stays on that angle like this as you go around. So it's always on this curvature right here. And that's what allows that to work. I think it was a nifty process. I hope you try it out at home on one of your projects. So thanks for coming and joining me today on the latest developments of the Klingberg Wing Mark II.